All right, well, welcome back to the show, everyone. Black Lives Matter is the rallying cry heard on our streets and seen throughout social media. As protests, protests against racism and police brutality continue to sweep across the United States, Christians everywhere are thinking about how to respond and responding. And that's what I wanna ask you and just okay. get your perspective about is why is using the phrase Black Lives Matter so controversial and political and does it have to be? It doesn't have to be. Uh, yeah. and it's certainly a regret in my life that it has become that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's obvious black lives matter. Yeah. Uh, that is an obvious statement of truth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's become a political organization now. Yes. And so it's a, it, it, by using that, are you now affiliating yourself with you know, everything that they've posted on their website that mm -hmm. they believe? And uh, they've gone beyond Black Lives Matter, they've got a whole social agenda. So mm -hmm. with that politics, uh, you're seeing that. And then, you know, for whatever reason, people want to make the point that all lives matter or blue lives matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's missing the point. We, yeah. we need to value um, the what, what are obviously an oppressed community within our midst and say, we value you, we want you to succeed, we don't want the police brutalizing you. Uh, how can we work together in, in our society to change things mm -hmm. again so our children, our grandchildren don't have to face, face these things? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in my opinion, saying Black Lives Matter does not mean that you are against the police. It does not mean that you don't agree that all lives matter. I say Black Lives Matter because, yes, all lives matter. And I love what there was a clip that was being circulated on social media by mm. Carl Lentz. And he says, yeah. since when does highlighting one issue disparage another? We can talk about one issue without negating the fact that there are other issues. So black well, lives there matter. Has, there has been, you know, I'll, I'll take the other side just because of the dialectic of it, mm -hmm. that, that it, you, you have split. And, and because it's become a political movement as, as well as an obvious truth, uh, when you leave that obvious truth and become a political movement, and in that political movement, you see signs talking about violence against the police. Mm -hmm. So you, that creates the divide. Yeah. Um, and we have to come back to loving your neighbor as yourself mm -hmm. and making sure that's the standard you're lifting up. That's a, that's a, a flag everybody can rally behind to mm -hmm. say, yes, let's do that. Yeah, well, sometimes it's difficult, I think, people get confused because you realize that in order to create change, you might have to be political because that's how policies are enacted. So, I mean, what is your advice to, to Christians out there? Uh, be active, <laughs> yeah. you know, be a citizen yeah. uh, and, and let your voice be heard. Stand up for liberty, stand up for truth, stand up for liberty and justice for all. Uh, now, more than ever, we need to do that. We need to have our voice heard, that we stand for loving your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that means a whole lot. And yeah. right now in our culture, we can say quite definitively, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. So how do we change and how do we get to a culture that we want our children to live in and we yeah. want our grandchildren to live in? All right, well, before we end this segment, mm -hmm. what do you think God is doing in our nation right now? Well, it's dawned on me that we're 400 years of slavery. Mm -hmm. um, 1619 was the, in Virginia history, it was called the red letter year. Mm -hmm. Women finally came, which all the men really wanted. Yay. It was the first elected <laughs> assembly in the new world. And so democracy came, uh, but slavery came all at the same time. Go back in Bible history, and 400 years of slavery for the Jews in Egypt. Um, coincidentally, a wow. plague came. Uh, there were 10 of them in Egypt that led to the freedom of the slaves. Now, we've announced, we've had an Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, we've announced freedom. We've had the Civil Rights Movement. We've had one man, one vote. Uh, we've had um, enfranchisement, if you will, that, you know, be part of the political process. Uh, but there's a new freedom that needs to come and uh, a new justice that needs to come. And so the verse that's been on my mind is Isaiah 42, uh, verse 4. God, he will not rest. Mm. He will not lose heart until justice is established on the earth. And so let's do that. Let's join with God on this one. Yeah. 
let's say I want to be of that mind. I don't want to lose heart and I don't want to falter until justice is established on the earth. Amen and amen. Thank you for your insight as always. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.